Imagine a world, a world filled with stories, knowledge, and experiences. This is the literary world, a universe in itself. From the ancient tomes etched in stone to the latest digital bestseller, each book is a doorway to a new realm of understanding, a chance to explore the minds of brilliant creators and thinkers. Picture the multitude of genres that make up this world. There are tales of romance that set hearts aflutter, mysteries that keep us on the edge of our seats, and science fiction that takes us to galaxies far, far away. There are philosophical works that challenge our understanding of existence, historical books that transport us back in time, and educational books that offer us a wealth of knowledge. Now consider the sheer number of books that exist. In every corner of the globe, in every language, there are books. They fill our libraries, our schools, our homes, and even our pockets in the form of e-books. The magnitude of it all is truly mind-boggling. Here's a question to ponder. How long would it take to read every book ever published? It's a daunting question, one that might seem impossible to answer. But as we journey through this thought experiment, we'll dive into some interesting math and fascinating facts about the literary world. We'll explore the staggering number of published books, the average reading speed, and even the lifetimes it would take to read all books. We'll delve into the complexity of reading across languages, the balance between reading for comprehension versus speed, and the importance of prioritizing our reading goals. As we embark on this exploration, remember, the goal isn't to overwhelm or discourage, but to celebrate the vastness of the literary world and to spark a curiosity about the books we choose to spend our time with. After all, each book we read is a journey in itself, a unique adventure that adds to the richness of our own story. So, are you ready to dive into the math behind the seemingly impossible task of reading every book ever written? The literary world is ever-expanding. Each day, new stories are born, new knowledge is shared. The realm of books is a vast universe in its own right, filled with galaxies of genres, constellations of concepts, and stars of stories. But have you ever wondered just how many books there are in this universe? Let's delve into some mind-boggling figures. It's estimated that since the advent of the written word, over 130 million books have been published worldwide. Yes, you heard that right, over 130 million. And that's not where the story ends. Each year, approximately 2.2 million new books are published globally. That's more than 6,000 books each day. If you were to stack them up, they would reach higher than Mount Everest. This staggering number has grown exponentially over the years. With the advent of printing technology in the 15th century, book production skyrocketed. And now, in the digital age, the ease of self-publishing has further accelerated this growth. Each second, the literary universe expands, with new additions to the vast library of human knowledge and imagination. However, this abundance of books poses a significant challenge for readers. With so many titles to choose from, it's impossible to read them all. Even if you were to read a book a day for the rest of your life, you would barely scratch the surface of the total number of books in existence. It's like trying to drink from a waterfall with a teaspoon. So the question arises, with so many books and so little time, how many lifetimes would you need to read them all? The answer might surprise you. Stay tuned as we delve into the crazy math behind this question in the next segment. Before we tackle the mountain of all books ever written, let's start small. How long does it take you to read a single book? When it comes to reading a book, several factors come into play. The time it takes to read a book isn't as simple as opening the first page and flipping through to the end. It's a process that depends on variables such as word count, page length, and your reading speed. Let's start with the word count. On average, a novel might contain anywhere from 50,000 to 100,000 words. A novella might have fewer, around 20,000 to 50,000 words. And an epic novel? It could have over 200,000 words. Next, we have the page length. A typical page in a published book usually contains about 250 to 300 words. Divide the total word count by the number of words per page, and voila, you've got your page length. Now let's talk about reading speed. This is where it gets personal. Everyone reads at a different pace. Some skim through pages like a breeze while others take their time savoring every word. On average, an adult reads at a pace of about 200 to 300 words per minute. So let's do some math. If you have a book of 80,000 words and you read at a speed of 250 words per minute, it would take you about 533 minutes to read that book. That's just shy of nine hours, but that's just the time spent reading. Don't forget to factor in breaks, time for reflection, and those moments when you reread a sentence or a paragraph because it's just too good to let go. 
Understanding how long it takes to read one book can give you a new perspective on your reading habits. It can help you plan your reading time more effectively, set realistic reading goals, and maybe, just maybe, make you appreciate the effort that goes into writing those books you love so much. Now that we've understood how long it takes to read one book, let's scale this up. Prepare to have your mind blown by the sheer scale of this literary endeavor. Imagine this, you've just finished your favorite book and you're feeling that sense of accomplishment and satisfaction. Now multiply that by roughly 130 million. That's the estimated number of books in existence today, but let's not just throw out a number like that without some context. Let's break it down. Let's say you're an avid reader and you manage to finish a book every week. That's pretty impressive, right? You're looking at 52 books a year. At that pace, you'd need about two and a half million years to get through all the books that have been published. That's about the length of time that the human species as we know it has existed on Earth. But let's be more optimistic. Say you're an absolute reading machine and you manage to read a book every single day. That still leaves you with over 356,000 years of reading. To put it in perspective, that's about the time when Neanderthals first appeared in Europe. Now let's not forget about sleep, meals, and, you know, living a life outside of reading. If you spent eight hours a day reading, which is a full-time job in itself, it would take you more than a million years to read all the books in existence. And here's the kicker, this calculation assumes that no new books are being published. But every minute more books are being written, published, and added to that total. So even if you could read at superhuman speed, you'd never catch up. You'd need countless lifetimes to read all the books ever written. But don't let this staggering calculation dishearten you. Instead, let it inspire you. The world of literature is vast, diverse, and endlessly fascinating. It's a reminder that there's always something new to discover, a fresh perspective to explore, a compelling story to lose yourself in. That's a lot of lifetimes. But wait, there's more to consider. Opening. Books are a universal form of expression, spanning across cultures and languages. Dive into the world of books and you'll find a colorful mosaic of languages. From the lyrical verses of Spanish poetry to the profound narratives of Russian literature, each language brings its own unique flavor to the literary table. This multilingual aspect of reading is a treasure trove for those who love to explore different cultures but it also contributes to the complexity of calculating how long it would take to read every book in the world. Consider this. There are currently around 7,000 active languages in the world. That's 7,000 different ways to tell a story, 7,000 different perspectives. Now imagine the sheer volume of literature that exists in each of these languages. It's staggering, isn't it? But here's the rub. Language can also be a barrier. Not everyone is multilingual, and even if you are, it's highly unlikely that you're fluent in more than a handful of languages. This means there are countless books out there that you may never be able to read simply because they're written in a language you don't understand. So how does this factor into our calculation? Well, it certainly adds to the challenge. If you were to attempt to read every single book in the world, you'd need to be fluent in every single language. And let's be realistic, that's a tall order for anyone. But let's not let language barriers dampen our literary spirits. Instead, let's celebrate the richness of literature across cultures. Each language offers a unique window into a different world, a different way of thinking. It's this diversity that makes the world of books so fascinating and infinitely expansive. Closing. Language adds another layer to this already complex equation. But what about the way we read? Reading isn't just about racing through pages. It's about absorbing the words, understanding the story, learning new things. Indeed, there's a delicate balance between reading for comprehension and reading for speed. For most of us, the goal is to read as much as we can, as fast as we can. But when we rush through texts, we risk missing nuances, important details, and the pure joy of immersing ourselves in a well-crafted narrative. So how do we strike the right balance? Well, it starts with understanding that reading isn't a sprint, it's a marathon. Let's consider the concept of speed reading a skill that some people have developed to devour books at a staggering pace. Speed reading techniques often involve reducing sub-vocalization, the habit of silently pronouncing each word in your head as you read. While this can increase your reading speed, it can also lead to lower comprehension. After all, our brains need time to process and understand the information we're taking in. Now this isn't to say that speed reading isn't useful, for certain materials like reports or documents where you're hunting for specific information, 
it can be a valuable tool. But when it comes to literature, fiction, or any text where depth, nuance, and understanding are important, slowing down can enhance your reading experience. Another strategy is active reading. This involves making notes, highlighting text, and summarizing what you've read in your own words. It's a more engaged form of reading that can enhance comprehension and retention. And let's not forget about the value of rereading. Revisiting a text can offer new perspectives and deeper understanding. It's like rewatching a favorite movie and noticing details you missed the first time. So while it's tempting to blaze through books to boost your reading count, remember that understanding and enjoying what you read is just as important, if not more so. After all, the true value of reading lies in the ideas, emotions, and thoughts that a book can stir within us. So reading is more than just a numbers game, but how does this all add up in the end? We've journeyed through the vast literary world, crunched the numbers, and faced the overwhelming reality of the sheer volume of books out there. We've delved into the staggering number of published books, the math behind reading a single book, and even calculated how many lifetimes it would take to read them all. We've traveled across languages, explored the balance between comprehension and speed, and marveled at the achievements of speed readers. We've discovered that reading every book ever written would take more lifetimes than we have. Yet this realization is not a cause for despair. Instead, it's a testament to the richness and diversity of human thought and creativity. It's a reminder that the literary world is vast and there's always more to explore, more to learn, more to enjoy. So let's not be daunted by the sheer volume of books out there. Instead, let's embrace the journey of reading, selecting books that intrigue us, inspire us, challenge us, and ultimately, enrich us. In the grand scheme of things, it's not about reading every book. It's about the joy, knowledge, and growth that each book brings into our lives. Happy reading!